Okay, today's lesson is about manufacturing considerations, looking mainly at learning outcome two for OCR engineering design. So the first thing we're going to look at is design for disassembly. So this is where products are taken apart, essentially to make it easy for them to be repaired. So if you think of a car, if you couldn't take the wheels off, once your tyres are worn, you'd have to basically get rid of the whole car and buy a new one. So it's a way of making sure products are designed so they can be taken apart, mainly for things like repairing the product, customising the product, etc. The next thing is standard components. So components such as these, we've got nuts, bolts, screws, resistors, LEDs, are supplied in the same sizes across the world. So if you had an M4 nut and bolt in the UK, it would be the same in France, it would be the same in the US, it's all made to the same sizes, so these components can fit relatively easily. Now these components are manufactured in mass production, so they are something that is made by external companies, you will buy them in. It's going to be much cheaper for you to buy them in than it is for you to make them yourself if you are a company. They're supplied in ranges of sizes, so nuts and bolts for example come in a vast array of sizes. You can buy them in stores, so you can simply nip down to B&Q and collect them. They're not something that's hard to get hold of. The safety pre-tested. So these components will be tested before. Um, if it's, for example, putting something together, they might have tests on the toughness of the material and the durability, see how much weight it can withstand, etc. And finally, your manufacturers do not have to make them. So these are quite intricate pieces, and obviously it's going to save a lot of cost in the long run if they can just simply buy these nuts and bolts, fixtures, fittings, uh, electrical components instead of making them themselves. So they're used in absolutely everything, they're used in a range of products and products are normally designed for these to be integrated and used within them. Now pre-manufactured components are a little bit different. This is something that's been made before so that you don't have to make it yourself. So for example if a builder was making a building a house if it was putting in the shower, they wouldn't make the shower tray. That would be something they had pre-manufactured. That would be something they bought in and they would simply just install it. It's going to be a lot easier. It's going to save a lot more time. And it's probably going to be a lot more cheaper. <laughs> Design for manufacture assembly. We can always call this DFMA. This is a process that is used to optimise manufacturing. So... The areas in which we can optimise manufacturing a manufacturer, the fabrication of it, the delivery, or the repair. So it's essentially making a product as easy and as simple to make as possible. Could we, for example, reduce the amount of manufacturing methods? Could we make sure that it can be put together much more easily? Is there a quicker and more cost-effective way of delivering it? And can we repair these products easily? So this is some ways we can optimise. So no tight tolerances, making sure that when we make it, you know, we're not making things to the um, optimum dimension or the actual dimension. We might give a tolerance on that, but obviously makes it a lot easier for us to make the product. Reducing the amount of manufacturing processes makes it a lot easier to make these products and a lot cheaper. Is the design functional? So does the design work as intended? Designs are often best when they're simple and obviously using standard components in order as a way to assemble it all together. I'm going to give you a quick brief overview of scales of production. I have got another video on this if you would like to watch it. So we've got batch, the pros and cons of this, reduced cost of labour, machines, cost of unit. The cons of that, each batch has to be tested for quality, so that obviously takes time. One-off production, this is where something is made just once, so it's tailor-made, it's customizable, it's unique. The cons of this is that it's expensive, it's time-consuming and specialised. Mass production, this is high production rates, so we're talking thousands plus, maybe into the millions. It maximises the profit and minimises the production cost. It's a high sell cost, however, and if a part of production fails, it can stop production totally. Now, I have done a video on durability and reliability. 
Uh, essentially, it's looking at your main things are tolerances. So can we make this product to a tolerance of one mil, which means we can give it one mil on the upper range or one mil on the low range. So if it's 25 mil, we can make it to either 26 or 24. Making sure our products are safe, so they are safety tested. Some good safety advice is essentially sharp edges. You know, if there's any loose wires, make sure they're concealed. Uh, no small parts for choking. And also, how can we maintain our product? If we go back to cars, a maintenance method we can use for that is servicing. So we change all the filters, the oils, etc., and make sure that car is running as it should. So what I would like you to do is have a go at some of these exam questions. So we've got two exam questions. Give three reasons why pre-manufactured components may be used in production and explain why the scale of manufacture can affect the cost of production. Please use the get busy method. So box your command words, underline keywords and structure your response. The first one I've helped you with. So we've got three reasons why pre-manufactured components may be used in production. So some of my structure was safe manufacturing time. So it's obviously going to save a lot of time if we buy these products in. Could it make products easier to assemble? This component will already be made to standards and quality checks. So there's some of the ideas that I've come up with. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video, have a go at these exam questions, and then once you've finished them, click play and we'll go through the mark scheme. Okay, so the mark scheme for the first one. You could have had three marks. Components manufactured can be outsourced. Outsourcing manufacturing saves investment costs for machinery. So it's saving money. Saves assembly time. Improves responsiveness to fluctuations in demand. Improved quality. So you're going to know that that product's going to be quality from a reliable specialist suppliers. Increased the ease of assembly in the final production stage. And regular just-in-time deliveries from suppliers can help to manage stock and inventory levels. So if you made three justifiable points, you should get three marks. And the second one, which was explain why scale of manufacture can affect the cost of production. So if you're making a large volume, as we said before, your initial cost, if you're going into mass production, is going to be increased. However, once that high volume starts going, you've got reduced amount of manufacturing cost, and also um, you're going to get increased productivity. So you're going to get increased profit and reduced manufacturing cost. So these guys put, if larger volumes are made to initial cost of tooling can be offset, therefore reducing cost per component. Small scale manufacturing tends to cost more due to high setup cost and material sourcing. High volume manufacturing requires high level investment in machining and tooling, where a small scale production minimizes this investment or labor costs can be higher. So you need three valid points for that to make sure that you get the full marks.